guy who was going to teach Fable about Grom the Paunch, apparently. So. Back to question. What? Uh, you have to do with Dragon Age. Basically, uh, basically Morgan. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you going to do when your mom, uh, when your mom finally dies? Oh, did you say? Rat, I yeah, I remember that <laughs> line. <laughs> Why can't we get stupid crap like that anymore? Because it's too good of writing for current writers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's get ready. It's time for you to learn about Grom the Paunch Fable. Is that Grom the Paunch? No. That's just the golem of the movie. Yeah, more or less. Well, it finally happened. Instead of talking about something five or twenty mm -hmm. years after it's out, I'm talking about something early. Luckily, the mm -hmm. last video gave me some official legitimacy. Hooray. Oh. So I have a review copy for the new DLC. Oh yeah, he had that. Oh I'll my talk god. talk about the free stuff they added in too, because why not? This will be the last of Warhammer for a while because I have a lot more to do. Okay, Ooh. let's get into it. And surprise good news, the <coughs> nuclear bloom for Warhammer 1 characters is gone. This had been nice. a problem since launch, so I figured it would never go away at this point. They're definitely not fixed up completely, but someone's working on it now. Hmm. Okay, there's more big ticket stuff. Last time I briefly mentioned the hellscape that was the green skin campaign. You'll be uh -huh. happy to know that they're fixed up completely now. The green tide has come and they've morphed into a very scary faction. So what all happened? The old Don't I know it, when I fought them, I did terribly on my first time ever playing Total Warhammer 2. Sensical tech trees and thrown into the garbage with the beastmen. Now we're in the future. The hmm. future of Big Thinkin'. No units can are you Big Thinkin', Fable? Yes, I can, Big Thinkin'. Restricted by tech anymore. All mm -hmm. the green skin stuff is fast to research now. Instead, mm -hmm. some technology is gated off by money, but it's near instant. So you're rewarded by smashing things up and getting more money, but there's more. Other tech okay. is restricted by a new resource called Scrap. These are the swords, armor, and heroin needles that orcs find after combat. I there are a few ways to get more, but most involve violence. Once again, encouraging non-consensual property alterations. Scrap yeah. also has a more fun Very use. Much orky. With it, you can choose between troop upgrades. Each unit can only get one. This allows you to further customize ah. and specialize an army, and there are all kinds of things to upgrade. A few will depend on your legendary lord. So this makes the greenskin armies even more different. But wait, interesting. Yet. All greenskins now have a wall army ability, and it's based off their legendary lord as well. This means that your lord goes, <laughs> and the boys, dear god, and the subtitle said, man, they are doing a great war. Fight harder for a brief time. That might not have been the right sound. You Probably can reuse not. it too, as long as you keep the fighting going. Once again, different lords can give different bonuses. However, there's still the campaign wall as well. Remember the awkward fightiness mechanic? The one that rewarded you with a wall army that would just follow your main army around like a little brother? This yeah. was also reworked, more like remade. It's now a meter across the entire faction. The more ah. ruckus you cause, the better the reward. When it's filled up, you can then target an enemy capital for the big wah. This is dedicated to either Mork or Gork. Mork or Gork. Cunningly mm. brutal or brutally cunning. Which do you choose, Fable? Mork or Gork? Gork or Mork? Gork or Mork? I don't know. It kind of feels like it's the same thing. It's oh, brutally Gork cunning or cunningly... It's brutally cunning or cunningly brutal, Fable. How can you get that mixed up? Gork has... Plus 10 weapon strength. What does Mork have? I'm not sure. Uh, whatever you, you pick, you have... pull it back a little, like 10 yeah. seconds. Uh, missile oh, strength. He has missile strength. That's no fun. Why hit enemy from fall when you can get in close? It's very much orky right Lord, now. Brutally cunning. Uh, whatever you pick, you have 20 turns to burn down or occupy the enemy capital. And you're okay. not alone because you still get the bonus army, but now attached to your army directly. It'll slowly oh. fill up. How many units are in it depends on how big and strong the original army was. The kinds of units depend on your war, like we're zagging a bunch of savage orcs in his, but also where you are. If your war is cool. near a volcano, you might start collecting lava troops. Yeah, there are new kinds of troops to use. Some are strange Ooh. variations that only the AI could use before, but now you get them. Others are brand new to the game, and I do want to emphasize that we're still in the free part. All the green skins get these guys. Crazy. They have a lot of useful abilities, but even if you don't... The boys read for a good crump, and we need small bashing. If you don't get any special units in your wall army, you still have 40 troops. My, my community is very strange. My comment section even more. ...to use in battle. That's massive and not easy for everyone to control. Yep. Fortunately, the AI can now control mm. your reinforcement armies, and this doesn't just go for the wall armies, but for every for that, faction. That. You're so you're free to just... Oh boy. 
I'll send you a PayPal um, invoice later. No. Too bad. Sit back with the expendables so go and soften up the enemy for your main forces. What <laughs> <laughs> I do? <laughs> I don't know. You so really so don't know. So just throwing orcs at the enemy <laughs> until they die. Did I mention every single army you have gets the wall army? Cool. Like, across the faction. Oh, that's that horrifying. A amount of green. Success has a lot of rewards to it. You'll get scrap and special new units to recruit. The grand prize is a trophy that buffs up the whole faction. The deadlier nice. the enemy, the bigger the trophy. You're finally rewarded for sending elves and scalies to the fiery pits of hell. All the green skin lords have been reworked, and each of their armies now has the potential to be absolutely horrifying in combat. Good old cool. Azag has taken a move. Now he starts up north with his own faction, Red Eye Mount. It's okay, it's okay. I Red Eye Mount. Last time I complained, Grimgore wasn't big and scary enough, and that was taken literally. He's been oh. drinking his milk, or maybe racehorse roids. He's been given many new abilities and can reliably murder enemy lords now. Cool. So Grimgore is finally the big mean orc he should have been. Back in the campaign map, there's been a bit of remixing in the Badlands. Some visuals were reworked, they added new locations like the Marshes of Madness with vampires and new Skaven to fight nice. things up. Carrick 8 Peaks has 10 slots, making it a better prize. Relatively minor stuff, but very effective. They even gave orcs the Norskin Confederation mechanic, which oh. I always thought was very orky anyways. If you crump the big orc, you get all the stuff. That's how things should work. I mean, that's always how the orcs would work. You crump the war boss, and then you get all his boys. There's even more minor things I could touch on, but That's you get the, the idea. And then this... you get access to his teeth. <laughs> yeah, then you can get his teeth. But always you gotta remember that humans just ain't logical. This is mission accomplished. A month or so ago, I, I absolutely like hated playing green energy. skins, but this time around, it was kind of hard to pull away from them. That Aww. said, I do still see some minor issues. The scrap mechanic is very welcome. It would be nice if it was given as a reward for some of the older quest battles as well, or some random missions in general. The lava mm. spiders are neat, but I do wish the platforms and goblins on top of them were a different texture. Like the platform could be metallic or a charred black color. I don't know, it just looks a bit off to me. Yeah, have some fire kobolds is. on there, which are just orange patchy goblins. Uh, I don't know, it's been a while. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't think this was canon. I don't think this is canon at all, but orange goblins Probably would be not fun. Anymore. Oh! There's the Great Green Prophet. The new units are nice, but if you're hoping for some lower end stuff, well... Yes, he's just dancing. He's a happy guy. He's a happy green boy. You might be disappointed. I mean things like Spear Orc Boys, or Forest Goblins, or Black Orcs with Shields. I know stuff like that was fun for theming on the tabletop. I was hoping Black Orcs might have a switch weapon around button. I can't mm. say I truly feel their absence playing the game, though. They have a solid roster, especially if you add in the new DLC units, which I'll talk about very soon. Plus, nice. there have always been tons of mods for these kinds of units, since they are fairly simple to make. I can only guess they didn't want the roster getting too redundant. There was also a leak so. showing what appears to be a Black Orc Big Boss. I'd bet oh. near anything that he's coming with the Skulls for the Skull Thrones event that Steam puts out every year. Maybe he'll bring friends, I have no idea. Nitpicks Maybe. aside, like I said, mission accomplished. This was all free, and the High Elves got some reworked stuff, too. Some mounts for characters and a small influence change. Ah. Yeah, they added Emmerich, too. He's home alone down near the Dragon Isles trying to, well, tame dragons. You can work yeah. with them for bonuses or try to challenge them to get them into your army. I heard that he can actually be pretty tough because he's collecting dragons, of course. There are a lot of dragons to catch. That's my review. I should probably get to the DLC, huh? Luck Fable. Yeah. Gobbos. I know this is bad, Max. Mm -hmm. Just maybe. Oh, it's this Mad Max Double Road. God damn it, Fable. You're welcome. This is the best though. I like that his title. I like his title. This is a game that has always been full of weird premises. So I'm impressed they took such a strange rivalry and made it immediately digestible. You have Elf Dark Knight era Batman and a Morton Joe Goblin. So we'll start with Ram the Paunch, the biggest goblin of all. His mission is to burn down of rest where High Elf Batman, Eltharian the Grim lives. Luckily he truly is the biggest goblin of all. Like, quite literally. He's weird. Why is he weird, Fable? What did he do to you? I mean, well, he trolled me to the point where he has, where he somehow has regeneration abilities. Me need some gobbles. Me miss my mono rye red gobble trump cards. When he doesn't participate in the Vortex campaign. Okay, so that's it, fine. What are Grom's special campaign mechanics? Oh. Well, he's a goddamn chef. 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. Rom is a big boy and a big eater. He once ate raw troll meat, which regenerated inside his stomach, causing him to eat more to try and digest it faster, and, well, it all ballooned up from there. Mm -hmm. So while you're doing normal campaign stuff, you're also cooking with Grom. <laughs> Actually, cooking with Grom is mandatory for victory. Gathering ingredients requires accomplishing multiple campaign and battle objectives. Kill a dragon for a dragon tail. You get the idea. You can also yeah. get more ingredients and recipe slots by yeah. using the food merchant, who appears randomly on the campaign map from time to time. What? I just realized something. What? I think I actually saw a video of someone playing Warhammer, uh, Warhammer, uh, well, Total Warhammer 3, and they were using Grom. That makes Because I remember his whole, goal, his whole goal was to cook. Yes, he wants food. From the time. You're always yeah, in the so hunt I to find I ingredients to start cooking boy, with. And but you can go crazy yeah experiment is crazy the recipe boy. also requires scrap to cook something up so the campaign is like shooting a man to get into a cracker barrel <laughs> over and over and over again sure. for a snack. i'd kill for those tenders if it mm -hmm. sounds stupid it is but it's also the best green skin campaign maybe one of the mm -hmm. best in the game grom's cooking can change things up dramatically and you can change the way you play the game at the drop of a hat you wow. carefully customize recipes and discover secret ones like the ingredient that makes all of your arrows explosive you bet oh. that's going to change how you use your Night Goblin Archers. It gives you a lot to play around with, and it's fun oh. finding all the new ingredients. Yeah. Centigore milk. Sweet boy he was. Ew! That is remarkably foul. I mean... Do you know what a Centigore is? <laughs> oh, beauty. Yeah, I think it was him. Uh, I think it was him, Falco. Well, I'm glad yeah, Gage is having a good time. I know nothing about fantasy, brother. You gotta like. He, he said, "Oh, sweet boy, he was." To Sensigor Milk, you can fill in the blanks there, Fable. Yeah, I don't wanna. My God, yeah, look this pizza cute. from Hell! It has pineapples on it. Oh it's no! A great campaign. You get to raid the elves and not play the vortex. In Mortal mm -hmm. Empires, you start off in Bretonia. That lets you bully the peasantry from day one. Wouldn't you rather uh, be here than out east? Being chased by some imperial named Valmir Van Von Volkvan? Of course. <laughs> that is a very... I love that name. <laughs> do it. Great campaign. I do have one issue with it, though. The spider lair should also buff Ragnaroks. Yeah, that's it. I'll hold off Raltharian for talking about the final battle, but for now I want to get to the unit roster. I mm. do have an issue there. Oh. The rogue idols are the big centerpiece unit and have some of the coolest animations in the game. It's the will of orc gods made manifest, meaning it's a big rock that smashes things. Cool! You know how Atlantis has those stone guardians that protect the ancient sunken city of wonders? Well, rogue idols are kind of like that, but they protect a neighborhood where you got your hubcaps stolen. <laughs> they are absurdly slow, but monstrously tanky. The more damage they take, the more violent they get. They can even smash down city walls. They're just that uh, strong. Oh. There are three variants of Snotling pump wagons, four including the Regiment of Renown. Ah, These are your fast-moving, wildly unpredictable charging units. They can punch far above their weight with the right positioning and throw units all over if that doesn't work. They're another solid addition to the roster and a blast to play with. Also just fun to watch doing their thing. Yeah. On the troll side of things, a river troll hag hero was added. She's also cool. good, as it's useful to have a tanky lore of Deathcaster around. Now normally I never recruit trolls when playing green skins, but they added two more that are worth your time. I adore the River Troll models. They look like Ew. gremlins who did that one thing they did in Space Jam. They smell so horrible that they debuff enemy units, and they're great fighters in water. They're they don't gone. run away nearly as often as normal trolls either, so they'll stay in the line a good while. Stone yes. Trolls are the tanky cousin, and can take an absolute beating in melee or from ranged weapons. Their stone skin protects them, but they still regenerate. Yeah, one trouble with trolls is they immediately, like, their morale goes down so fast. They're a useful unit, but the look of them is disappointing. River Trolls have a fantastic look based off the tabletop design. Same story for the trolls in vanilla. Of course, they're tweaked around to be less exaggerated like most units in the game are. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, the stone trolls are just the regular trolls with a reskin. They don't even need a brand new model because in the original, just the head is a bit different. They could have oh. made something really cool out of this. If this was one of the free units they added, I probably wouldn't have minded it too much. As one of the paid DLC units, it does leave little more to be desired. Mm. They don't have a regiment of renown variant either, so maybe they were going to be free. I don't know. Still, if you do like the green skins, I'd say this DLC is a must-have. The campaign is fun, and I didn't need to know that, Falco. The units are solid. Rom isn't only just serving up healthy recipes, he's also serving up smiles. It, uh, the trigger? Uh, oh my yep, god. Fun police is here. Hey, can someone turn that down? I can barely hear what's happening. <laughs> Do you know what that was, Fable? Not really, what was that? It's time for High Elf Batman. Oh yeah, I've heard of High Elf Batman. Have you heard the rumors about Eltharian? 
Well. I have, and I don't know much about him, actually. Mm -hmm. He defended his city once yeah, from Grom and beat the tar out of him, but now Grom... Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Yeah, that's that's me. I, I've heard of him, but I know nothing about him. Grom's back to do it again. I joke about him being Batman, and the game starts him off right next to Superman, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Cavill. That's actually wonderful. I'll try to hold it in. Eltherian's campaign goal is defending the city of Tor Ivres. The Greenskins are already relentless, and there are plenty of other evil creatures out to burn it to the ground. The city is unlike any oh. in the world with its core of special units and defenses. It can spread a mist that harms its enemies and helps its allies. The whole campaign nice. goal is getting the city to the last level of defense and then defending it against Grom. Special defenses have a special mechanic. Eltherian has access to a hidden... cave? <laughs> that he uses to watch over the city. Repairing and upgrading it unlocks more of the special Mistwalker troop types and gives you other special abilities as well. This is all upgraded nice. through a special supply resource. You can get it from some missions and also in a new, very interesting way. Murdering green people. Oh. Not just that. In battle, his army has a special cage ability. It heavily debuffs an enemy lord for a while, and if he dies under this effect, he doesn't really die, he gets captured. From here, you can indoctrinate them, and they'll give bonuses with an enemy faction. At oh. the same time, you could forego that and just execute them outright. Either way, you'll get some supplies. Later, you can look into enhanced interrogation, which will let your missed units outright copy an enemy's special ability in battle. Oh. You don't always have to lord snipe either, since when the enemy's running away, you can try to capture them then. I'd usually try to snipe anyways, for the fun of it. Now, mm -hmm. you may have already noticed this, but the question then becomes, what about auto-resolve? Well, there's a chance to capture a prisoner in that, but it's not very high because I did auto-resolve a few silly battles, and there was only one time I captured a prisoner. He wasn't even good enough for my dungeon. It is cool seeing the city get restored in the campaign map. The mechanics give you a mm -hmm. great sense of reawakening a long-lost power and order. If you want, you can just stand the donut and turtle it out forever, but you don't have to. That's Capturing nice. certain settlements across the ocean will give you constant supply income, so you do have some reasons to go adventuring, at least in theory. Grom will attack in 150 turns. I maxed out the defenses around 50-ish. I was Whoa. excited when I saw the cave, but there's not much to it. You repair a building, Damn. upgrade it once, and you're done with it. And honestly, the rewards it gives are really minor. Compared to all the options Grom gives you, there's really not a lot there, because yeah, the mist is cool, but that's really about it's it. It's who they well, were the focusing play on. very differently, they all look very similar, so not very exciting on that front either. To make matters worse, their combat roles aren't too much different than the regular roster. There are mm. exceptions, just not many. There's more strangeness. If you capture a legendary lord, there's nothing special about it. What's oh. bad is if you capture them, you don't get the trait for defeating them in combat. Because you didn't defeat them, you captured them. Oh, that if stinks. That makes any sense. There would be times I'd capture a prisoner, say a beastman lord, check the prison, and no one's in there. Maybe the guards forgot about him. Things feel a little bit off, and there seems to be an issue with the pacing. It seems like the cave buildings should have at least, like, three levels and give something more substantial. At the same time, it feels like you need more defenses uh. to reach max city level. You can at least trigger the Grom battle early. At bare minimum, oh, maybe a shorter nice. timer and a harder campaign difficulty can make it more frantic and challenging. A desperate rush to prepare for Grom. What they give now is way too generous. Then again, a short timer would mean having to fight these small battles. You know, to capture the prisoner. Maybe there oh. could be an upgrade for auto-resolve chance? I don't know. I might be making it sound bad, but it's not. It's just kind of dry. Some of the Lord Packs for two felt like one faction had a lot more time put into it, and this one feels like that for Grom. Yeah, maybe I can tell that why. Same kind of strange, okay place. Having Mage Lords is nifty. That's about it. Mm. You have Rangers as a new starting game unit, and you have some mid-tier Spearmen as well. I didn't use not them bad. that often, but that could be attributed more to a greater supply line problem, which I'm not going to get into. In retrospect, mm. it's also hard distinguishing them from the Mist units because there were so many of them. The new stuff kind of blended together. That's On the memorable side, the Arcane Phoenix is gorgeous. Ooh. I really enjoy using its ability. What does it do? Oh! Cool. Horrifying. That's pretty cool. The lions, ligers, and chariots are also a lot of fun. Lions, ligers, and chariots. Essentially have super war dogs and some very dangerous flankers. Right. Plus, it is a fact that ancient... What? I said, oh my. Oh Romans my love God. seeing people devoured by lions. And we pattern governments off them, so they must know something. Hmm. Once again, everything is okay, but kind of understandable for two Attack reasons. Attack lions. The first is most of the really useful and memorable nice. high elf units are already in the game. There is that flying one, but I'm not even going to post a picture of it because I hate it. So if I don't know what you're talking you have about. Rival, which means you need some high elf units. The second I would guess would be budget. This isn't the first time we've seen something like this. Remember that <sighs> DLC where the Lizardmen got the biggest unit in the game by far? And then two of the Empire units were just, like, archers? Yeah. Yeah. When I see how gigantic and gorgeous the idols are, then watch one hurricane a rock into the stratosphere, I think I know where the mare where money went. Sure, it is yeah. only eight or nine bucks, but times are hard right now. So if you have no plans to play Grom, Times are very or hard right now. Content, and money is tight, yeah, you can hold off on getting this one for now. You can still play Emmerich's campaign. That's free, and it's pretty fun from what I've played. If you're interested in Grom or Orcs, then get it, because you won't be disappointed. He's a likable mm. character. 
honestly, <laughs> they're both pretty likable. <laughs> the smallest chamber is mine. I'm going to end this by talking mm. about the final battle because there's a lot I find interesting about it on both sides. It indicates where the game might be going. Mm. Because the final fight is a siege battle. And to oh. your credit, it's really engaging. The siege okay. map is big. It may only be one wall, but there's a lot of city layout behind it. In both campaigns, most nice. of my fighting was inside the city. It still took effort to get in. There were magical traps outside the walls and inside the streets. So there was a threat to the attackers beyond just whatever the towers were shooting out. Rogue idols okay. could smash on the walls, but there was also a new army ability called a Doom Diver team. This was also able to hit defenders on the wall and also punch oh. a hole into it. This got me thinking about sieges in general and my endless nightmare of towers and rams. Towers Instead and of just rams. building towers and rams, what if you could also build an ability like this? Oh. You know, preparing uses of some kind of special attack. That's not bad. Yeah, idea. walls came down sooner, but there was a lot of fighting among those points. Hey, you had to adjust people there? on the wall and move troops through the streets to intercept. Not really. The attacker had army abilities. Oh the defender did too, but also traps they had set. It made the fight exciting and unpredictable for both sides and pretty challenging too. Actually having ways to get inside more efficiently and move around and fight made it so much more enjoyable. This gives mm. me a lot of hope for where sieges might end up one day. Really, Hopefully. there was a lot put in that has interesting potential. How about the wall army stacking mechanic? Maybe Skaven could have special slave slots there. Then minutes from oh, below could become like a purely defensive siege option. Or maybe something only in Skaven territory. Then fighting those dirty rats outside their home would be less of a nightmare. Skaven do have this ability to just pop a group out in front of you. But I don't want to go crazy theory Or behind crafting. you. Just so out overall, from the floor. Overall, a great patch, a great DLC if you're into orcs, and an okay DLC oh, if you like the high elves. So that's enough Warhammer for now. There are two mech games coming up, so I'll see you then. Oh. Stench of their dung piles. <laughs> an orc update was coming in 10 minutes. I don't joke on this channel. Hmm. Any favorite sci-fi universes other than 40k? I really like Dune. There are some good Dune games. I As don't know much about Dune. Uh, pre 343 Halo. Yeah. There's a lot of neat stuff in Halo lore. It's kind of a shame. Fantasy yeah. or 40k? Now people are trying to get me in trouble. Ooh. I'll say it though in Dune myself. It's fantasy. Pretty easily, actually. Yeah, same for 40K me. 40k is a great setting for tabletop because the universe is so big that you can make up a ton of your own stuff for it. As far as getting into the setting goes, though, fantasy is a lot easier because it feels like things have more consequence because it's so scaled down. Yeah. And end times happen, though, and that was. Let's not talk about uh, that. No, are you going to do more Total War games in the future? Yeah, not immediately because I'm sure people are tired of hearing me talk about it, but there is one in particular I really, really want to do a video on eventually. I have no clue when that'll be, though, and I have no clue when the next Warhammer 2 DLC is coming either, so who knows with all that. All right, I'll see you next time. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey, eh? Anything you want to say, Fable, to the nice people? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I kind of feel like I ran out of new things to say. That's fine. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you guys later. Have fun, take care of yourselves, and if you like our stuff, like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon. Do all that wonderful stuff you can if you really want to help us succeed in our lives. Anyway, later guys.